What's up guys, so welcome to the start of a brand new series here on the channel. Been looking forward to this one for a very, very long time. This, my friends, is F1 Manager 22. That's right, we're back with the Pinnacle of Motorsport, but this time we're gonna be trading in our wheel for some computers and some analytics and some strategy. So uh, you guys know we love F1 here. I'm a massive fan. We've been playing the games for the past few years here on the channel. A lot of you guys have also gotten into F1 through our series, which I'm stoked to hear about. It's one of the greatest sports in the world. And um, this one's going to be a little bit different. So this is like a management simulator game. This is, you know, you're, you're the team principal. You're the Toto Wolf. You're the Christian Horner. You're making decisions both on race day and, you know, all the time. Leading up to race day, you're, you're working on everything from strategy to hiring and firing staff to, you know, what you're focusing on, what you're developing, you know, timelines, things like that. So uh, it's it's gonna be pretty intense honestly I'm, I'm really excited because you know as a big fan I, I do a lot more than just watch the races I, I just digest a lot of information and try to learn a lot about the sport so I think this game's gonna teach me a lot I think I've got a lot to learn and uh, it should it should be really fun. So, hope you guys are excited. Thank you so much to Frontier for providing me with early access. I've had the game for the past week or so to be able to record some videos early for you guys. So, keep in mind, the first few episodes are going to be before the day one patch. So, this is an early build of the game. From what I hear, it's already in really good shape, though. So, I don't think we're going to run into any issues. One last mention before we get started. My friends over at G Fuel have a huge buy one, get one sale going on for back to school right now. Use my link down in the description. Use code TMartin at checkout. You're going to be able to get yourself a nice little half-off deal. Formula Here we one, go. A sports Brand new career. Hearts, minds, and nations. Where the 20 best drivers in the world come together to take on some of the world's most historic circuits. And that legacy continues today. The 2021 championship was thrilling from start to finish. And 2022 is set to be even better. New regulations will usher in an age of pioneering changes. New driving talent alongside returning champions will be dueling it out to the bitter end. The pressure will be on the team principals in the upcoming season <laughs> as clip. they manage their drivers, their cars and the whole team to push to victory. This is not a challenge for the faint-hearted. This is Formula One. Dude, I just got chills. That was that was an incredible intro. We've got David Croft in the game. We've got, you know, official clips Mercedes and stuff. Mercedes returned to F1 in 2010. And since 2014, they've won the Constructors' Championships back-to-back -back every year. In 2021, they took home the Constructors' Championship once more, although they narrowly missed out on the Drivers' Championship coming in second. Heading into 2022, Mercedes will insist on dominating the competition. Nothing less than the fastest car and the most wins will give the Silver Arrows the outcome they want to see at the end of this new season and beyond. Who's going to tell them? It, it doesn't really end up working out like that. Dude, this is amazing. All right, so we, we've got our team that we're going to be choosing to manage during our career. You can see, you know, you've, you've got your team, you've got performance, car performance and stuff, employees, you've got your drivers, your reserve drivers, your... You know, staff and stuff behind the dude. This, this is there's so much detail. The Red Bull team burst onto the F1 scene in 2005, and ever since 2009, they've been one of the top three teams in the championship. Last season ended brilliantly for them. Max Verstappen won the prestigious Drivers' Championship, and Red Bull are flying high once more. I like Max. Heading into 2022 under the right leadership, Red Bull could find themselves heading up the pack once more. They'll certainly be hoping to end the season with not one, but two championship trophies for their cabinet back home in Milton Keynes. I respect Max. I think he, you know, has potential to be one of the greatest to ever do it, but there's a major asterisk in that one. Okay, so I was going to listen to all these, but that would be like a 20-minute video in and of itself. It's honestly pretty cool just how much, you know, uh, detail and stuff is in here. So who do we want to run with? I didn't really give this too much thought before starting this, this episode. I kind of thought maybe Haas would be fun. North American team, a lot of room to grow, a lot of potential. Looks like their objective would be sixth. Long-term objectives of podium contenders starting balances low. I feel like a McLaren wouldn't be bad because you could take them from like, you know, a, a kind of a middle ground up towards the forefront and, and hopefully start fighting with the top three. Alpine wouldn't be bad. Alpha Tauri. So this is kind of interesting. McLaren's like a three and a half, 3.75 star, and they've got a medium starting balance. I would have thought they had more money. Alpine is a three star, 
but they've got a high starting balance. It's got to be between these two. You know, a lot of potential, pretty good starting spot, fairly, you know, not, not cushy. There's still a lot of work to be done. You can't fall down the ranks, but you, you've, you've got the assets in place. Maybe we'll do that for like a, a season or something. And then if, if we like what we're doing and we want to continue, we want a harder challenge, we could do like, you know, bringing a, a Williams back to their, their championship form or something like that. So McLaren or Alpine, we're going to go ahead and flip a coin. Here we go. Flip the coin. It. Oh, I thought it was going to be McLaren, but it's Alpine. All right. Sounds good to me. Here we go continue not gonna lie mclaren would have been probably a little bit easier but it's 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 all good hi there nice to meet you i'm audrey mensa one of the team's senior engineers welcome to the team it's great to have you on board gonna be honest audrey i don't know if i'm qualified for this Our position but i'm a great season gonna try. In 2021 and the whole team have been working really hard to make the upcoming season even better let's get you shown around as right. our new team principal you're responsible for a lot of aspects of the team. Everything from managing our team's growth, overseeing our finances, and deciding on race day strategies will be in your hands. Dude, I'm so excited for this. You can keep an eye on most things from your dashboard here. I can take you through it now. First up, an overview of the board. They're the ones who set the expectations for the team. If they're confident in your leadership, you'll be fine. If they lose confidence in you, however, they might look to replace you. All right. The board sets Pressure's on. and objectives for the team to achieve. Reaching them will help keep confidence high. So be sure to familiarize yourself with what's expected. You'll want to keep an eye on the long-term objective for beyond this season as well. So eventually they want to become a constructors champion. We could work with that. Okay then. Let's look ahead to the race weekend. We need to start preparing for the next Grand Prix which will be the first of the season. Bahrain, we've got 11 days, first of 22 races. As it's your first day though, there's nothing urgent for you to address. Feel free to explore more, or you can select continue and sign off for the day. Once you do, time will pass, but don't worry about missing anything. You will automatically sign back in if an important event comes up. Did I just, I love simulation games like this so much. Like some of the like, you know, Jurassic World games and things that we played and this is like it's it's combining my love for games like that With f1. It, it's amazing. This is gonna be so good. I'm gonna do a little bit of exploration try to, to check in with the board often You can monitor board bring you guys along. levels your available budget and your progress towards a greater team rating from here I don't want you guys to have to sit through the entire intro and stuff. Dude, look at all the menu backgrounds. We can see all of our trophies and stuff. The board are the owners of your team. They provide a budget for each season based on the targets they want you to meet. We've got medium confidence. They're satisfied with, with everything so far because we literally just started. So we're going to have board reviews and the higher the confidence at that time, the more cash we're going to get as a bonus. Their long-term objective of becoming a constructor's champion has a four-year limit on it. They want us to be a champion by 2025. <laughs> oh my God. Dude, 62 million dollar season budget. You've got a team rating. This is our three out of five rating here. This is based on your constructors' results, your drivers' results, and the heritage of your team. You know, kind of the story and legacy of it. We are currently in the revered category here, which is is solid. Oh my god, dude! Look at all of the the detail. Look, look. We're we're reading about the technical regulations here, the engine cooling regulations, the drag reduction, front wing, rear wing, side pods. This is crazy. One of my favorite places. The cars, this baby. Is where the car builds happen and where we develop and store our car parts. Throughout the season, you'll want to make sure the team are working on upgrading components and that both cars are being kept in good repair. You can also use car analysis to compare our car builds to other teams. Dude, the level of detail is insane. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> Every single little part of the car from aero to powertrain can be adjusted. You can have different setups for car one and car two. Let's Every take a look at our car analysis. develop their cars over the season. So it's important you keep an eye on them. You can compare our team cars against any other team here or even against an average of all teams. If you want to drill down even further, you can compare performance of specific car parts too. You can compare specific parts of a car to other people's specific parts of a car. 
And this, we're, we're looking at Bahrain. That's the, the first race here. So grid average for, for top speed is 370, 372. We're 370, 377. So we, we've got a little bit of an advantage there. I'd love to see that. This is insanity. It's honestly almost a little over overwhelming. Of course, we've got Fernando and Esteban as our drivers. We've got Oscar Piastri as our reserve. Well, let me go ahead and tell you how that works out. Not very well for them. For staff. It's not just the fastest car that makes a team the best in F1. It's the people doing the hard work behind the scenes. Manage your staff from here, from department heads to your pit crew, and keep up to date on their performance. Our pit crew better be good. The pit crew over at Cooper Motors cost us a lot of time, especially at the beginning of the season, so we need to learn from that. So our tech chief is Matt Harmon. Head of Aero is Dirk DeBeer. Race engineer is Carol Luce. Race engineer, Josh Peckett. Each of these guys all have ratings and things and contracts that we're gonna have to keep an eye on and, and stuff like that. We've got pit crew ratings here so we can focus on, on specific things. It looks like our weak spots are tire changes and wing adjustment. Our car release and front and rear jacks are pretty good. Our scouting team is gonna, gonna look not only for other drivers, but also other staff that become available. Engineering team, of course, is gonna be the team behind development and stuff. We've got a max team size there, monthly salary of $66,000. Looks like we can upgrade their, their centers and stuff. We've got 37 million. Do we want to start upgrading? I'm going to hold off on any major investments for now until we kind of get our feet under us, of, of course, here. You know, as you, you build those buildings, it's going to be a big upfront cost. It's going to take time. And then you're also going to have a monthly upkeep cost you're going to have to keep an eye on. You can upgrade them, which will also increase their monthly upkeep cost. So you've really got to balance the books here. And over time, they're going to degrade and their effectiveness will reduce... So you need to refurbish them to keep them up to Over snuff. Time. Holy facilities cow, will dude. degrade. This, this is insane. So we've got car development facilities. That's what we just saw right there. We've got staff facilities, a team hub, scouting department, and a race sim. We've got operational facilities, a boardroom, hospitality area, weather center, so we can get better weather info for the races. Helipad, luxury helicopter landing space to offer a first class experience for your most important guests maybe for sponsors and things like that. Memorabilia room, tour center. Dude, this is insanity. And of course, our finance room. This is arguably the most important room of them all. So we can see, you know, our, our balance sheets and stuff. We've got about $9.2 million coming in each month, about three and a half going out. And that's just on drivers, staff, and facilities. We haven't even started spending money really yet. So going to have to keep an eye on that. Okay. So anyway, our first race is 11 days away. We're going to start practice here next Friday. It does look like we've got a few events leading up to that. Let's just, uh, let's just go ahead and continue. It's see no what we've got going on. Day. We'll have you on top of things in no time. You'll continue moving through days this way until it's time for the race, which you can see in the upcoming events list. It's good to get in the habit of regularly checking that list. Perfect. Let's take a look at what needs doing today. You have an alert in the top corner. There's an important email awaiting a response. So you should check your inbox when you're ready. Of course, sponsorships are a big source of income for all teams, but it's a two-way relationship. When negotiating these deals, you're gonna have certain obligations like creating merchandise or hosting sponsor events, which can be a little inconvenient, but they secure the funding that keeps us competitive. So we can go to our sponsor obligations and it looks like um, we're gonna have sponsor events in the factory and on those days, car parts manufacturing is gonna be paused. We're gonna have memorabilia room events. And on that day, the, the morale boost is gonna be paused and then driver appearances, they're gonna pause their uh, their experience gain for those weeks. Okay, so, you know, it, it does, it, it's got some downsides. Looks like you've received a budget. But it's gonna be okay. Request. Most of the team's budget is decided by the board at the start of the season plus whatever we get from last season's prize money and any extra sponsorship revenue we earn. All about the money, baby. All right, here we go. We've had an idea for a season kickoff party to bring everyone together to celebrate the team. We'll need a budget approval if we want to go ahead with it. What do you think? For 10 grand, it's going to improve driver and staff morale. Hey, you got to spend money to make money, baby. I reckon that's a good decision. It should keep the team in high spirits anyway. We're going to have a good season. Now that's dealt with, we can focus on our first Grand Prix of the season. The race weekend is still a few days away, so move forward when you're ready. I'm ready, baby. I feel like we might want to think about, you know, starting to spend some money on our, our... There's always some final work to do before we can set off. Check your inbox for the race prep report on this weekend's circuit. 
our buildings and stuff, but I'm also a little bit nervous, man. I don't want to make the wrong decision. All right, so Dirk Beer, our head of Aero, is hitting us up with post Bahrain testing results. Looks like we've, uh, I mean, our, our high-speed cornering is good, but it looks like we're, we're struggling in a lot of places here. I think, uh, you know, it, it looked like speed was kind of a problem for us, so underfloor is probably going to be pretty big here. And if you dedicate hours in in the you know wind tunnel and, and testing and stuff like that which you can see we've got a certain number of hours per period two cfd mau hours and in, in 20 wind tunnel hours that's going to bring our our top speed performance up that's going to bring our dirty air cornering and stuff up i might i might even try to try to do a little bit more if we don't use it we're going to lose it we i mean we got to spend money you got to you got to spend it to make it so we're, we're going to start putting some work in and hope we make the right decisions so you can change the focus around here and that changes you can see over here we can we can see you know how it's it's going to affect everything if we move our our drag reduction up like this that's going to put our top speed for DRS and car performance into fifth. I think that looks that looks pretty good. Airflow sensitivity. That's gonna move our low speed cornering up. You can also choose how many engineers are working on this. I'm I'm gonna put four engineers on this. Rushed is gonna increase the cost. They're gonna put in extra hours to be able to finish it. I feel like cutting 20 days off there is, is pretty worth it. I'm gonna I'm gonna rush them. It's gonna cost us 1.4 million dollars. Hopefully, hopefully this is a good idea. I'm just gonna go for it, nice dude. Work. If it works out, great. If it That's doesn't, doesn't. Started. If you check your calendar, you'll see the team have given you a delivery date for the design. Once it's complete, you'll be able to manufacture that part anytime. Sweet. Continually designing new car parts is imperative to improving our team's performance and staying competitive on the track. Check out the car analysis area regularly to see how our cars compare to others on the grid. So yeah, we want to take a look at this screen regularly and, and keep an eye on everything, make sure we're not falling behind and uh, make, make sure we're, you know, keep it up with, with the Joneses. So that, I mean, that's exciting. Do we want to work? Do we want to like, you know, buy any facilities or buildings or anything like this right here team hub provides a space for staff to take a break and study their craft 800k done in 14 days it's going to add to our monthly upkeep but i, I mean it's going to improve our morale our weekly experience gain by 20 percent yeah we're going to go ahead and buy that race sim an advanced race simulator that allows drivers to sharpen their skills when not on the circuit weekly experience gain for drivers is plus 20 percent we can upgrade it we're going to take it to 40 percent i'm going to upgrade our sim baby if we build a boardroom that's going to increase board confidence i'm not really too worried about board confidence helipad team attractiveness plus 10 sponsor targets payout plus one i feel I, i'm gonna build a helipad for sure let's let's fall out that's not that expensive and honestly it's gonna be well worth it if we're getting plus one percent on all of our payouts that's that's a long-term investment memorabilia room morale for staff and drivers team attractiveness uh, i think i'm gonna hold off on that tour center weekly income thirteen thousand for one hundred and eighteen thousand. yes i i will build that and we're gonna keep upgrading that so we can we can bring fans in and, and take care of the fans <laughs> Look at this. For $10 million, we can upgrade our CFD simulator, our computational fluid dynamics, which simulates airflow over aerodynamic car parts during the design process. So we were just looking at that as we were choosing the, the part designs. For $10 million, it's going to take us from 0.012% to 0.024%. It's doubling its effectiveness, but it's just funny seeing such a small gain if anything i think we keep uh i think we keep developing parts we're gonna design some new parts here rear wing rear wing's gonna be good i'm gonna put one cfd hour in there i'm gonna put uh i say we we put like 10 at or 10 10 wind tunnel hours in there move our focuses around i'm mainly just let me show our rank on grid i'm mainly just you know Looking at the numbers on the right. See, that takes our DRS to a seventh. I'm gonna put our other five engineers on this and we're gonna do we're gonna do normal. It's gonna cost us seven hundred and twenty-eight thousand dollars. I just wanna have people working. If we've got people sitting around not working, that's costing us more than the money we're spending. This is your race preparation area, where you'll get the team ready for the upcoming race weekend. You can also find all the information you need on the circuit we're racing on here. Okay. One thing you'll always need to do before each race weekend is setting our performance targets. 
These help us generate more potential rewards for the team. So you want to set lofty goals, but also realistic ones. So we can see our circuit info here. Overview, 57 laps, 5.4 kilometers. We can see our circuit length with all the, you know, DRS zones and sectors and things, sections by speed, car attributes, time considerations. This is just so fascinating. Look at this. You can see the average lap times of each of the compounds of tire. You can see how long they're competitive for. And then you can also see time loss of seconds per lap. So every lap, when you start in the sauce, this is what you're doing. And then every lap after that, you're going to lose 0.11 seconds. On the mediums, you're going to lose 0.07. On the hards, you're going to lose 0.06. Looks like we've got incentives for both the qualifying session and the race. If we can reach those targets, we'll get an additional payout and it won't cost the team anything if we don't meet them. Okay. You can also decide to add targets here and offer our sponsors guarantees. These are a risk as we face a potential financial loss if we don't meet them. But if we do, we'll gain a much larger reward. So you've got qualifying targets for this weekend, race targets for this weekend, and then hot streak targets, which are gonna be multiple weekends in a row. We've got our guarantee slots here under quality. So our, our goal is to reach Q3. We can guarantee eighth or better. Let's, let's do that. I'm pretty sure, didn't Alonso get eighth in quality there? And then uh, reach at least round two of qualifying with at least one driver. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna guarantee both of those for sure. You can edit these. Ah, oh, we could move it up to seventh. I'm gonna guarantee ninth. Let's play it a little bit a little bit safer. I'm gonna say two drivers into Q2. Fastest lap is our incentive. I don't think we're gonna get that finish position at least an eighth. I'm gonna guarantee that. We could do two drivers. So if we have one, at least an eight, that's going to be worth 137. If we say two two drivers in the, the top 12, top 14, we can get an extra 200 grand. I'm going to say two in the top 11. Dude, I'm, I'm getting ballsy off the bat. I like this. Okay. And then we've also got hot streak targets here. Qualify 10th or higher for two races in a row with both drivers. Yeah, finish position streak. I'll guarantee that as well. We're, we're going to have a good start to the season. Either either You've really good or really bad. Needed, and the team can't wait to get started. It's time for the first race of the season. You can take some more time to look around if you like. When you're ready, let's get this show on the road. Dude, I'm I'm nervous. I am nervous. And the thing is, is I'm, I'm going to have to make live calls during the race on when to pit and stuff. And it it's not easy. I, I'm not super confident Welcome in my ability there. Welcome to the archipelago there. of Formula One. Bahrain might have a small land footprint, but it's showing its big spirit right now in the grandstands. Either way, it's time for another fantastic weekend of Grand Prix racing. The Bahrain International Circuit is a challenging track, and the cars routinely have to brake from high gear to low to take the narrow turns. With the need for downhill braking, the risk of locking up is one drivers will need to manage. It's all about focus and balance to get victory here. We might still be early in the season, but that doesn't mean we can sit back and relax. Everything is up for grabs, and nothing is certain at this stage. Dude, I'm okay, then. stoked. Let's get to it. All the, the, the detail and information and, like, just little quips Great and stuff are amazing. Welcome to your first race weekend with the team. It's Friday, so we're kicking off with free practice one as usual. Okay. So we can format, of course, we're gonna have practice. Each weekend contains three 60 minute practice sessions. You're gonna be able to test new parts, acclimatize drivers to the circuit and fine tune car setups. Quali follows a knockout format over three rounds. Of course, we, we I mean, we know all this. You've got a pit stop strategy, top 10 drivers, yada, yada. So all parts and everything are, are fitted. Track acclimatization, you can see how, how you know much they've gone around the circuit. Car parts knowledge, they don't have any knowledge of the new parts yet. Setup confidence, we're not sure about. All cars are ready. Here During we go. During race weekends, you can decide whether you want to manage the practice sessions yourself or whether to hand over control to your team. I feel As like letting the team do it's probably smart. You should let the team handle the practice sessions. Okay. So we're going to we're going to simulate to qualifying here. P1 complete, P2 complete, P3 complete. Off to quali. This this is where the money's made, baby. Quali is uh, a whole nother beast. Today has already seen the culmination of practice, so we move on now to the all-important qualifying session. Excitement is really picking up here today, the anticipation continuing to grow within the paddock. 
with free practice now over, drivers will have to know this circuit inside and out if they're to gain a strong position on the grid. 20 cars take to the track, all with aspirations of taking pole. Let the competition commence. Here we go. Got to hit all of those promises that we made and everything, dude. I... Whew. All right. Let's get it. So, so far, as of practice three, we're in eighth and twelfth. That's not what we wanted to, to hear. To help maximize our driver's performance, the team have them work on three goals during practice. Track acclimatization, car parts knowledge, and setup confidence. If you manage the session yourself, you might get an even better performance from the drivers for the rest of the weekend. Ah, okay. So it does help if, if you manage it yourself. Well, looks like we've got 100% acclimatization. Car parts knowledge is the same. Alonso's a little bit more confident in his setup than Esteban is. Right. Time for qualifying. Our results here will determine where we start on the grid for Sunday's race. Qualifying takes place over three knockouts. We need at least Q2. And only the fastest drivers will advance each time. Same as practice, the team can handle qualifying for you if you like. Let's get you hands on for this round though, just to make sure you're feeling confident before race day kicks off. All right, we're gonna manage Q1. Oh my gosh, dude, I'm nervous. Our drivers need to be set in their fastest possible lap times so we can advance to the next round of qualifying. The slowest five cars will be knocked out. Keep a careful eye on time remaining. The time limit on qualifying rounds really ramps up the pressure. So we're going to send Alonso out. Take those tire blankets off. Get out there, bug. Go get him. Watch him come out of the garage. Oh, this is sick. You can see his, his overview, his, his position on the track here. Looks like he's going to be the first one out. Haas behind him. So he's going to have his, you know, kind of warm up lap, his out lap. And then we're going to be onto our quali lap. We can speed up the time a little bit. Up to eight, up to 16. Each car is fitted with a number of onboard cameras. So you can see the action as it happens. Okay. You can also use the map view if you like. It gives you a good overview of the whole track and all the cars. Remember you're managing two drivers throughout the session. So make sure to keep an eye on both of them. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm, I'm a little scared and overwhelmed. So we can see different, uh, different views here. See him going around the track. See what's behind him. See what's in front of him. Got the wing view. We've got our little... Oh, he's, he's warming his tires up. All right, he's, dude, he's, he's about to come over the line. He's about to start his, his hot lap. Final corner there. And now he's going to be pushing it. Looks like he's got nobody out in front of him. Should we, should we send, I'm going to send Akkad out too. All right. Here he goes. Hopefully he's going to start putting in some purple sectors. So you can take manual control of him. Do I want... Full control over pace, lift, and coast, and ERS strategies. This is only last duration of this run on the track. We'll reset back to automatic. Okay, I, I don't I don't want to mess with that yet. I'm a little bit I'm a little bit scared. You have to choose when you call the, the car in to dude. This is there's so much happening here. He got a purple sector. He's the first one out there. Oh, but he's he's got traffic. He's got traffic. That's a decent time for a flying. 132.4. Keep an eye on the stand-ins throughout the session and try and keep the drivers out of the knockout zone. Okay. Right then. That qualifying run is done, so the driver will return to the pits now. I know everything happens so fast over a race weekend. But if you need to catch your breath, you can pause for as long as you like. Or if things aren't moving fast enough for you, you can speed up a little. So you can straight up pause it. You can just hit pause and then everything stops. Okay, that's nice. But we're, we're good. All right, so he's automatically... He should automatically return to the pits. Our driver is back in the pits. You need to reconfigure the car before we can send them back out. Let's go and take a look. Okay. So we're going to take a look at Alonso's setup here. Make sure the run plan is updated to include refueling. So all you have to do is fit some fresh tires. So of course we've got our compounds here. You've got your dry compounds. Soft is, is fastest, but least durable. Medium's a balanced, hard is slowest, but most durable. You've got your wet compounds over here. And then we've also got grip. So tires are the contact point between the car and the track. While on track, tire condition will degrade and tires will lose grip. When tires lose grip, the car will be slower. If a condition reaches 0%, it's going to fail completely. If two or more of the tires fail, the car will be forced to retire. We want maximum performance during qualifying. 
So let's use a fresh soft compound tire. I mean, I, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna keep these these on. We've got a great spot right now. I'm not gonna use a fresh, fresh set yet. Maybe in Q2 or Q3. But yeah, we're we're gonna chill for a minute. You can you can replace car parts. We obviously don't have to do that. You can change the the angle. Interesting. I feel like if we take it down to one, that's gonna get us closer to all of his ideal ranges. So we'll we'll see. We'll try that. So we're in fifth and eighth right now. We're in a good spot. I'm gonna send Alonso back out. Let's see. We've got 11 11 minutes left. Let's see if he likes that new setup, and then we're gonna be able to take a look at at Esteban's setup and see if we can't uh, you know help out. Ooh. He's just not happy with the car at all. Maybe a five degree front angle. We'll try that. And then we're gonna send him back out. We honestly need to, to think about timing our send outs, you know, cause you wanna try to get them into to clean air or possibly even into toes and stuff. That That's something that's gonna, gonna be tough. Alcon's falling down the, the thing here. Uh, not going on fresh tires might have been a mistake. Everyone went out for one final time. We could, we could be in trouble here. This is, uh, you know where the track's gonna be the the strongest so we'll see there's gonna be some some jumping around here it actually looks like we're gonna hold strong okay so we've got an extra set we're good to go we made it to q2 beautiful work baby we're through to q2 great work in q2 the fastest 15 cars from q1 battle it out for only 10 places in q3 charles and carlos leading the pack we've got sergio perez behind them lewis hamilton George Russell both ahead of Max Verstappen. Kind of an interesting setup there. We were in 11th and 13th. We can do better for sure. So it looks like Alonso did not like our new setup. He dropped to a 65% confidence. So I'm going to revert that to the highest confidence setup. Esteban's setup didn't really change much. So we're just, we're going to leave him there. I'm going to send them both out. Let's see what happens. So we've, we've got two fresh sets of softs. I'm going to save those till a little bit later in the, in the session. I feel like is, is probably a good idea. So we'll see how this works out. Akon's actually probably getting a, a bit of a... Oh, no! He locked up. Uh, well, that's not what we wanted, but we're we're going to be A-OK. -okay. He's obviously going to gonna come back in. I don't know when to send him back out. I'm going to keep an eye on, on everybody here in the pits. Again, we don't want to have him in traffic. This is nerve-wracking, dude. What's a, a lap time here? I guess 130. So you're gonna you're gonna need to go out. You're gonna need to have at least 130 to get back around. Maybe around like two minutes. This is this is terrifying. I'm not gonna lie to you. This is really really. Oh, everyone's going out. Okay, I'm gonna reconfigure. We're gonna put the fresh set of softs on there. Let me slow time down. I don't wanna have anything get by us too quick. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Oh my goodness, I hope we have time, dude. We gotta get out of the pits and we need to make it all the way around the track, but people are potentially gonna be slowing down. We may not even, dude, we may, we, we may have, we may have waited. Uh, I don't think we waited too long. I think we're good. As long as we get around and we get over this line in the next minute, I think we will. Dude, we're gonna be the, the absolute last two on track. That was perfect. 30 seconds to spare. This is gonna be really, really big. Come on, baby. Let's let's see a little jump up there. We got a fresh set of sauce for each of them. We didn't do anything. Alonso got in. Esteban did not make it. Shoot! I thought we were gonna have something there. So we've got one guy in Q3 uh, here. Check. Eleven minutes yeah, to do okay. it. He's got this fairly fresh set of softs. I mean, I I think I think we're just gonna send them out and see what happens. Oh my gosh, dude. I thought we were going to jump up the charts and have a crazy ending right there. We were the last ones on track. Everyone puts down rubber, so you're you're always going to have, you know, the quickest times as the, the sessions progress. Looks like he got a, uh, a P5 so far. All right, let's not have this go too fast. He's going to end up coming back in. Fresh set of softs going on there, and we're going to try to put him out right at the very end again. So we're here... I'm thinking when, ooh, Hamilton's about to go by right now. It's a little early though. I don't like that. I'm trying to see like maybe when Russell goes by, try to time it. Oh, it takes a while to send him out. We're going to be behind Verstappen. It, it, it takes longer than I thought to, to send him out. I was hoping to get him, you know, right behind somebody to be able to maybe catch a little bit of a draft. But uh, all right, this is, this is it. Let's go ahead and finish this thing out and see how Q3 goes. Looks like there's been a lockup. Gasly with a lockup. Comments when you're back in the garage. 
we got we got P9. Not the worst. Not the best, but not the worst. Max is gonna end up with pole. Okay. This is a stressful game, dude. Drivers are stressful. Very stressful game. In, ready for race day. We didn't see any unexpected prowess from Alpine during qualifying, but they did well for themselves. Everything's still open to them for the race. Okay. McLaren did well during qualifying. They maximized their potential and are in a good position for the race today. We're under clear skies here tonight, certainly to the team's relief. Now they can focus their strategy on pushing their cars as much as they can. And clear skies, baby. Lot for the teams to handle. So will the drivers and their cars be able to cope with the pressure? Let's find out right here at the Bahrain Grand Prix. <clears throat> Time for the main event. This is it. The Bahrain Grand Prix. This is a great time for us to get some early points under our belt. So let's stay focused and push hard. So of course we can plan our strategies before the race start. This is going to be when we're pitting, what we're going to start on, what we're going to change to, that kind of thing. We base that off of the weather and other things, you know, as we can predict. And then of course we're going to have off strategy. Strategies are only a guide. You can always go off strategy during the race or even start the race with no strategy in place. If you do go off strategy, you will still need to pit but will not receive reminders for pit windows. Strategy A is a fast but risky option, relying on two soft stints and no hard compound at all. Strategy B is a well-balanced option, two soft stints and a nice long middle stint on a hard compound. Right, strategy C is a slower but safe option for this track. We'll tackle the final stint on a medium compound instead of a soft tire. So A is going to be the riskiest. It's also going to be the fastest with a, an estimated race time of 130.51. 130.57? You're losing six tenths of a second? Or is that... That must be six seconds. You're saving six seconds if you go with strategy A. I'm going to go with A. And then maybe for Esteban, we go with the safe option. So we, we have one, one really aggressive, one safe. I don't really like playing it safe, though. I kind of want to go all out. But then that, that gets a little bit sketchy with pit timings and stuff. But hey, we're, we're here we're here to win ball games. We're, we're not here to, to play it safe. Let's get it. Oh, my goodness. This is probably a mistake. It looks like clear weather tonight for this race, with the drivers now just taking position on the grid. Here we go. Looking here at Fernando Alonso. With a top 10 position on the grid, this race could really go either way for We need to prioritize his race. Further back, we've got Esteban Ocon. They're starting in the bottom half of the grid today, so there's a lot of cars between them and the podium. Okay. The race start is mere seconds away. Dude, this is... You've got your own B-roll of your drivers and, and stuff? And this is it. The Bahrain Grand Prix. And it's... And it's lights, lights out. out. And away we go. Okay, so there, I, I am, I'm terrified right now. I really don't want to mess this up. So we're, we're not going to be pitting for 14 laps. I mean, we, we could just sit here and, and relax and watch, right? We can take a look at pace of each of them. See so your timings, our telemetry, car condition, see if they have any damaged parts or anything. See the condition of their tires. So Alonso starting on worn softs. That probably helped him get away, but it's not going to be good overall. Akon's on, on fresh softs here. We're going to have to manage their fuel usage. So obviously the more fuel you have, the heavier you're going to be. It's going to reduce your, your you know, speed and stuff. You also, it looks like we can, we can increase or decrease how much they lift and coast. And the fuel delta is going to project how many laps a car can travel relative to the finish line. Just keep an eye on your remaining fuel. If we run out, the car will be forced to retire. So right now we've got to be careful because they're both under, but we'll, we'll just kind of see how that goes. We can also adjust Managing their pace. pace. will help you manage a car's tire temperature and wear. Oh my gosh, dude, there's so much. Driver's pace directly impacts their lap times and temp. Select the pace command that's right balance of speed and tire conservation for your current strategy. While on the tack, tire condition will decrease, reducing performance and eventually failing completely if tires are not replaced. Keep an eye on the tire condition of both cars. Over time, tire condition will fall, reducing their grip and performance, eventually leading to tire failures and car retirement. This is terrifying. There's so many little intricacies that we have to we have to, to keep an eye on. We're also going to have to manage their ERS. H how can you do this for two cars 
all at the same time. I'm assuming a lot of this is, is probably simulated and you don't have to manage all of this, but like to do this for two cars and pay attention to two cars and see what they're doing, like, hey, you should be harvesting right now. You know, you're in a good spot. And then it, this, this is just, this is crazy. There are three ERS strategies that deploy more energy than they harvest, but each use that energy for a different purpose. Overtake and defend are best for getting ahead of cars or for keeping them behind you. Deploy is the fastest strategy available. Okay. Harvest will prioritize charging up the battery instead of using energy for performance. Neutral will maintain the current battery charge over a lap, which gives a nice balance of energy deployment and harvesting. So we want to use this sparingly. We got to be careful about that. I think we just got to let them let them race. Was that a lockup on the track? Schumacher lockup. Let's oh, you can watch replays. Then. Right, watch this. There's Schumacher. They've Locks up and goes well. That could have been much worse. Did he retire the car? He stopped. Of course, we've got our interval times. We've got our leader time. You can see tire wear for everyone. So it looks like Alonso's in a good spot compared to everyone else. Arcon's in a good spot as well. How many pits, sectors, last lap. So last lap, let's see how we're looking. We're a little bit slower than Gasly in front of us, but we are faster than Joe behind us. Our delta on fuel is going up, so that means we could even get a, a little aggressive. We could tell him to push. I think we just we just chill for a minute. Let's just kind of let, let the race play out and see what happens before we start getting really crazy. See, our fuel is, is kind of on a bit of a balance. Okay, DRS enabled. Now this is where we might be able to have some fun. Oh, he's going for the pass. Get it, get it, get it, buddy. Go. I don't think he's going to get him. We're close. Woo. All over the place. Not quite. And DRS is disabled. VSC. 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 Copy. It's lap four. We don't pit on lap four, right? We don't think we could go soft, medium, hard, do we? I think it's too early. No overtaking permitted. I may have made a mistake We've right there. A car run wide. As the race progresses, nope. remember to keep an eye on the planned strategy you put in place before the race. The strategy view will let you check your strategy, adjust it, or even change it entirely. The data view is also an important area to track during the race. It gives you a deep dive into race data. Just what I need, extra deep dives. All the team's drivers. Nobody went in. We made the good call there. So we've got our data view here. We've also got our strategy view. So we can see, you know, kind of how the strategies are playing along. Looks like we're, we're good so far. Nice, nice, easy way to start it. We're going to keep going here. VSC is going to be ending soon. And we are back racing. Oh, did someone run wide there? Gasly. Let's oh, oh we're going to get around race. Gasly. Yeah, Let's this. go. Yeah, Gasly. And they've gone wide, very wide. That's not ideal. We not didn't get around him. Oh, come on. How do we not capitalize on that? We're really close up on him, though. Uh, DRS enabled. DRS is back online. That's good. All right, I'm, I'm going to try. As soon as he comes around this corner, I'm, I'm going to tell Alonso we're going to go. We're going to go deploy. Go, buddy. Go, go, buddy. Go. He got him. He got him. All right. Now back to neutral. That's a good overtake from Alpine. Here's the replay. Okay. Now watch this. Here's Alonso's car. Dude, this is so hard to manage two people at once. Let's go. That was huge. That was huge. And they get past. Which moves them up a position? And now I think we need to do the same thing. Oh, we got the team. Say that went down well with the team. Nicely done. Now we're going to be careful he doesn't end up getting us back, but I want to do the same thing with Akon here. We're going to go to deploy as soon as he comes around this corner. Gasly got us back. Shoot. That's not what we wanted. He's got plus laps on fuel. I'm going to push deploy. Push deploy. Let's let's put some work in, buddy. Looks like that was a position gained. For Alpha Romeo. Dude, there's Alpine so much happening advanced. right now. We can take a look now. We're just now have a watch this, this is a crazy like midfield Alpha. battle that we have going on between the four of us. Let's go. Alright, we're we're here together now. We're we're a little Alpine sandwich. Alpha Romeo just moved up a place. Ninth and tenth. Joe has given us a hard time here. Akon overtakes Joe again. Alright, eighth and tenth. I mean we we probably could could be watching this. This battle, this is kind of insane. Now the thing is, we are gonna be getting close to our pit time. So it looks like the window starts in about a lap, but ideally we're gonna pit around lap 18. Who's running wide there? Russell running wide into turn nine. Latifi lock up, that doesn't surprise me. I'm thinking we probably wanna pit Alonso early. Cause he's the pit on window encompasses the laps lower tires. Planned pit stops in your strategy. 
This means it's nearly time to call the planned pit stop. Unless you think there's a reason to pit immediately, I always recommend sticking to the strategy and pitting on the optimal lap. So I think we're going to pit Alonso on lap 20 or whatever. Is it? Is it 20? Lap 18. And then we're going to put Akon in lap, lap 19, I think would be ideal. Or maybe 17? What do we think? 17 or 19? Because they're not going to be able to go in the same time. We could do 17 and 18. We should do 17 and 18. I'm going to pit Alonso on lap 17 and Esteban on lap 18. Maybe kind of an undercut type of scenario. So we're going to we're going to pit him. Put him on the mediums. Pit this lap. I hope this is the right That's call. A good overtake from Alpine. Okay, pit lane. He's okay, coming in. Pit. Now, if we if we take a look, Akon's passed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say Akon come in. We're going to pitch you on the fresh mediums. Pit this lap. Beautiful. Here we go. Is anybody else pitting? We're the very first one in the pits. Everyone's probably going to pit this upcoming lap. But Alonso started on the worn softs. So I figured let's get him off of those earlier and get him back onto fresh tires. Uh, hopefully people start coming in here. No. No. We're just going to... Oh, signs came in. Okay, we do have some people coming in. Hopefully good pit stops. Hopefully we're, we're good to go. All right. Woo! Dude, this is stressful because you never know. Every decision could have a, a terrible a terrible outcome. So we're going to be in 11th and 12th here. But some people's Joe is yet to pit. Magnuson's yet to pit. Sonoda's probably yet to pit. I guess technically we could see. We have a lot of people that haven't pit yet. So we're, we're going to come out of this in, in great shape, I think. Joe came out behind us. And Gasly. Fuel on both cars is looking good. ERS, we're probably just going to keep in neutral. Just want to make sure everything's all even. We could try to go aggressive, but I think we just stay standard. I think we stay the course here. Oh, Akon got the fastest lap with a 137.422. Alpine just advanced. Okay, we overtook Russell. It's a race position gained for a Mercedes. Oh well, no, R Russell overtook him. I think I think we got him and then got him back. So we we've got a, a bit of a battle happening here. I want to see that. Look at this, dude. We we might be able to get George. I'm gonna say let's let's push. No lift and coast required from our side at the moment. Let's 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 push both of these boys. We're gonna lose some fuel, but it's it's gonna be okay. We'll see if we can get them around him. Akon overtakes Russell. Russell gets him back. We gotta be careful about it's fuel. A race position gained for Mercedes. I'm gonna say now let's let's go to uh, to deploy on both of them. Let's see let's see if we can get around them. We both got them. All right, who's Alonso is behind Akon. So what I'm gonna do I'm gonna move Alonso to defend Esteban back to to regular, and hopefully we're gonna be able to defend Russell and prevent him from getting around us. I actually I think we might be able to to move Alonso back to regular as well. And then maybe maybe back to... Well, let's keep them on push for now. And then we'll move back to balanced as needed. It looks like we've got some decent spacing here. <sighs> okay. I don't want to waste too much fuel. I'm going to go back to balanced on both. Speed time up. See what happens. Hopefully we're going to be able to... It looks like we're working together. We could try to push to get Russell out of DRS range. He's 0 0.6, 0 0.6... 0.2.9. He's all over the place. Strategy-wise, we're going to be pitting around lap 38. So we got some time. Just trying to watch these times here. I want to see Russell. Dude, Russell's getting... Oh, oh, he's almost out of DRS range there. I'm tempted to try to push. We got 2.3 and 2.2. I think we've had a car run Norris wide. ran wide. Sounds like someone's Leclerc locked up. locked up. Norris ran really wide. He dropped all the way down. Vettel ran wide. Dude, holy cow. We're up into 7th and 8th. Russell's hitting the one second mark, so he could be getting close out of DRS range. Just entered the pit window. Okay. So what are we what are we doing? Four, 41 is gonna be our ideal here. I'm pretty sure this this line here is is what it says the optimal is, but it also has this S, the the, the soft compound logo under 40. So I'm I'm gonna go for 41. Whoever's in front at the time, which currently is Hakon. We're on that 40 right now. We're gonna wait, 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 for, oh, 41. So this this is where we wanna go in, right? I'm pretty sure this is where we wanna go in. We've got Akon in front. So I'm gonna send, eh. Do we wanna cover with Alonso? I'm, uh, I'm gonna give him the priority because he's 2.2 seconds ahead. Esteban, we're gonna go ahead and pit and we are gonna put you on those fresh, fresh, fresh softs. 
to be able to finish this thing out. And now we're gonna put Alonso in for some not so fresh softs. I might have messed up Akon's race a little bit right there, but we'll see. He had a, a nice a nice two second lead, so I think he's I think he's gonna be a okay. Looks like there's been a lock up. The Tifi lock up. Let's see how this all shakes out. Did we really mess up Akon's race, bro? What happened? I think we messed up his race. That's that's my bad. We sh we should have waited for the Slow optimal time. We're okay though. If we're in sixth and ninth, Mercedes seventh and ninth, we can't we can't you know be upset about that. We've got some some millijoules saved up. Ten laps left to go. I'm gonna wait to make a bit of a bit of a move possibly on on Russell. Ooh, we did get Russell. Alonso overtakes Russell. Then. Let's see. Now watch this. Here's Alonso's car. I like that the, the announcer, you know, he kind of has generic responses, but it's it's fairly good for the moment. I'm gonna say we're plus 2.7 laps. Let's let's push 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 on both. Push 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 it's push push push. Russell Mercedes. gets Alonso back. Got to be careful we don't end up running out of. Of fuel. Alonso's going to be two seconds behind Hamilton. Esteban six seconds behind Bottas and 16 seconds in front of Gasly. I, I I don't think we're going to be able to be able to do much here. Let's go back to balanced. It's not worth potentially wrecking or running out of fuel. Vettel ran wide. Russell Russell got Alonso back. Okay, so Alonso, we're going to put back on push. Shoot, I might have messed that right up too. And then I'm I'm going to say ERS. Let's uh. Let's deploy. Deploy, deploy, get in front of him. Think we got in front of him? Yep, we got him. So now I'm gonna go into uh, into defense or ne neutral. We're gonna keep him on push though. He's got a lot to lose here, man. We're gonna keep him on push. I don't wanna just completely disregard Esteban, but I, I think he's I think he's solid. I'm gonna keep him on push. He's coming around here. I'm gonna say de defense on this corner on this long stretch. They're gonna come around this start finish straight, so we wanna make sure that they're defending. Okay, and then we're gonna go back to neutral. By the end of that, we were able to hold our position. Only a couple laps left. We never really worried about our pace either. We could have probably been more aggressive with that throughout it, but we're okay. We're gonna have a long straight here. I'm hoping he's gonna be able to stay out front. They got him. We got one lap left. Oh, they both got him. I'm going to go attack and deploy. Attack and deploy here, baby. Let's let's try to get back around these fellas. One lap left to go. I don't know if we're going to get him, dude. We don't even have DRS. Poor traction now. Traction issues. Poor traction now. Okay. Standard. Balanced. Dang it. Do we need to undercut some one or overcut or something? No, I, I think I think we're good, bro. We're gonna slow him down. Let's let's go light. Just bring the car back okay, home, buddy. Okay. We'll, we'll be we'll be happy with two top tens. I said my goal was two top tens, and it looks like we're gonna end up with two top tens. Just a couple of corners left here. Uh, we're we're good. I saw somebody right behind Esteban, but it, it's the the Aston Martins. We're good. That was a check flag. All right, we'll take a P8 and we a P9. A car. So we deserve these double points. Good job, everyone. Let's go. All right, double points for our first oh, race. Is. Making good on our, our promises and guarantees and stuff. Feels good. That was a stressful, stressful, well, all, stressful had a good day. Race. This wasn't bad at all from Alpine. Now the question is, how can they make it better next time? We've got to do better Absolutely. though. You know what I mean? Like This I, was very promising. And now the team will be doing everything they can to make good on that promise. The teams now look ahead to the next round where they'll deal it out in the sand dunes of Saudi Arabia. The level of detail and stress that you feel while playing this is insane. I'm actually, I'm really curious for you guys if it's fun to watch. I, I feel like games like the this potentially are more fun to play than to watch. Race weekend, depending on their performance. With enough experience, your drivers will be able to improve their skills. Nice. Looks like, uh, you know, practice quality. Esteban didn't get full quality because he didn't make it to Q3. Race, both good. Growth potential. All right. Uh, that's interesting. So you get a multiplier at the end of it. So in total, Esteban ended up doing better than Fernando. Fernando obviously is, is approaching the end of his uh, his career. So that's growth potential multiplier is pretty important. Made some money. $4.6 million being deposited straight into the account. Congratulations on completing the go. first race weekend of the season.
The team's outcome will have had an effect on board confidence levels. You can see their response in more detail in the board menu. But there's plenty of time for that to change over the season. Nice. Take a look at what you can be doing before the next race weekend gets here. Our time is precious. And these moments between races are a good point to develop our team further. Got to make sure we're constantly we upgrading and developing and team over in the warehouse. Check it out. It might be something interesting. Okay. Take a look at the board here. Board confidence. They're satisfied. They were satisfied with our uh, secure performance there. Not happy. Satisfied. So you guys have it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, let me know what you think. You know, again, like I just said, I, this is an incredibly detailed, incredible, like if you're a fan of F1 and you like like the, the statistics and the, the you know, nitty gritty behind it, it, there's so much that this game has to offer. I don't know how much fun it is to watch though, especially somebody who's not an expert. Like if, if you could see an F1 driver playing this, like think like Lando Norris is like streaming it or something like that. That'd be pretty crazy. Or like even a team manager. We need to get, you know, Toto Wolf out here playing this game. But um, for, for me, I'm not an expert. Do you guys still enjoy it? Do you not? What do you guys think? Uh, let me know down in the comments and uh, we'll see how it goes. So love this, dude. I genuinely had so much fun. I am absolutely playing this going forward, whether you guys want more episodes or not. We'll probably do at least a couple more episodes just to kind of test the waters and see how things go. But uh, man, if that wasn't very stressful. Let me know what you guys think. Drop a like if you guys enjoyed. Peace out.